Hi everyone, Paul here again, and let's see, once again it's about midnight, so I better start fixing something. Seems like no matter what I do during the day, I can't seem to get these videos done until about midnight with something to fix. Anyway, what we've got here is a hard drive that's come in, and the client has said that they can plug it into the machine. It sometimes shows up the folders, but when they try to copy anything, it's really slow, and it usually just times out. So this is from a portable enclosure. I've already taken it apart, and unfortunately, we can see it's a integrated USB 3 on the board type drive. I really loathe and detest these boards because if anything goes wrong with this section here, you really can't do much about it. There are ways to get the data off through some of the um, test points around here. It's not something I normally do. I usually send it off to someone else if it gets that bad. But as a general rule, I consider these to be fairly bad news. I much prefer it if it's a normal SATA connection and uh, you can put your own dock onto it. So it just makes it a lot easier that way. But this is what we got, and so we need to try and get the data off. I'm hoping it isn't anything like damaged heads or a, um, a read buffer, a, yeah, read amplifier, anything like that. Hopefully we can work around it using software. Uh, one thing that is moderately common with these Western Digitals is apparently there's a issue in the firmware or whatever and that slows them down after they've read a bit and the only way to you can either do a firmware update which I'm a little bit disinclined to do at this point because I'd rather try and get the data off now or at least try to work my way around it than risk losing everything by destroying the firmware in some sort of botched upload so now one thing I'm going to try also is I have this here which is a USB relay switch. It's a fairly simple device. It's something I made up uh, multiple different variants of. Uh, this one switches the power for USB inline. So you just plug to your PC here and this will just go to the hard drive. Now you probably can see these uh, USB 3 connectors. Unfortunately this particular variant I didn't wire up correctly on the back here. I got my pins wrong when I was doing the configurations so it does work with USB 2 as a fallback and given that the drive is running slow it's not going to be a major problem. Uh, uh, we control it to the piece from the PC using this port here plug it in, there's a piece of software I've got that then lets you control this relay and uh, you can just turn the drive on and off. It's not the most ideal way of recovering things if we need to do that because um, we would definitely be hoping that the mechanics of the drive are still okay and can handle being switched on and off on and off quite a few times so fingers crossed that works I'm now going to switch over to the console terminal after I've set this up and I'll take it from there and we'll see if we can get some data off Okay. We've got our terminal window here ready to do the data recovery. Now I'll do these all on a remote machine that I've got set up for doing data recoveries rather than my main workstation just because uh, it's not really a good thing to do important data recoveries on your machine that you're doing everyday things on just in case you, know, you accidentally trip the power or whatever. Particularly if it's a critical hard drive recovery that you're finding may only have one or two to three uh, cycles left in it before it gives up entirely. So we're just doing it through Secure Shell with a uh, screen on the other end, just makes it very easy to do these things no matter where you are. So we have our directory set up and we've plugged in the USB switch which we can actually show here and if we get the mouse you can see it here, it's got the power switch uh, it's just based on the generic power switch by the uh, OB dev people. Uh, if you, I'll put some links in on the comments to let people know where they can find that. I also have circuits which I can show up later. All right. Uh, all you have to do with this is you just run power switch and you're right, in this case turn on one 
there's eight ports but I've only got number one actually active on this particular device and if we t let's see, t you can see it's spinning the drive up and you can see it's reading okay it's one terabyte it's got a single petition on it All right, that's good let's see if we can get DD Rescue to do anything with that Oops, eight. and see what happens. Seems a little sluggish. Okay, well I mean we've got a good rate there, it's pretty okay. That's flat out. Uh, let's keep reading. Uh, we're dropping we're dropping. Yeah. Oh we're back up. No, dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's so basically what this behavior does, and what I've been informed of is it will read the first say um, half gig, as we can see here, and then it simply just starts giving up, and diving down into low KV. So what have we got? We're half a gig, and we're in two hundred. Now the main thing that's bothered here is we can see our remaining time is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> that's probably going to get out to two, three hundred days and I don't think we're going to be wanting to wait that long. Oh, it's already up to 74. Not good. Alright. Just terminate that. Nice thing about DD Rescue is that even when you quit, it uh, the log file keeps track of everything. So when you start it again with the same log file, which is the thing here at the end, uh, it will carry on exactly where it was left off. All right. Now I do have a script written for these sort of situations. Yeah, so hopefully I haven't modified too much. Uh, what is it? Get data. All right. Uh, SDC is right. Uh, so I don't invoke DD Rescue before the drive is actually ready after I switch it on. I've written another small program called Wait for Device, and it lets me put in the parameters that I'm waiting for to see in the system before I actually invoke DD Rescue. So in this case, um, yeah, I'm not sure what. Pardon me. Uh, message. Let's see, what have we got, what have we got? Uh, well, we can just go by WD, that'll do. That'll do. Now the minimum data rate, we saw it was gotten down to 64,000 bytes per second, so we'll set it at 100,000 here. Sleep time is how long I wait between switching the drive off and bringing it back up. You don't want to thrash the drive too much, so we're hoping 30 seconds might give it some life. I don't know really how much that influences things, but I'm going to stick with 30 seconds for now. And we have an endless loop. So we turn on the power, we wait for the device. If that comes back with success, we run the DD Rescue with the minimum rate set at 100,000. Uh, I should point out this DD Rescue version is the latest. It's a 121 Pre 5. It's not one that you will have on most distributions. You'll have to go down, load this, build it yourself. It's not that hard. So, um, nothing special required in it. No dependencies, things like that. It has this exit on slow feature, which I'm really dependent on. So, what will happen is when it drops below 100,000, it will terminate DD Rescue. Vervo's force. Minus O is so that it will um, reset the file pipe if it encounters a um, bad sector. It's a catch for some weird Linux behavior where the um, ongoing data transfer rate seems to keep dropping after each bad um, bad read. So it's not sure where that problem lies, but somewhere in the kernel, it's probably a protection thing. But we use this to get around it. Data preview just shows us what we've got, the device, the image file, and the log. This just checks if it's came out all good in the end, we terminate. Otherwise, 
we switch off, we sleep, and we go back up and do it again. So let's see if this works. Uh, that uh, I suppose a bit of okay, that's already executable. Um, as you can see here, we've already got the half gig or so. Well, it's not quite half gig, but close enough. Uh, the drive's probably still running, so we'll go power switch off one. And we can see that's disconnected. Alright. Okay, let's get this thing running and see how that goes. There we are, come up. Let's see we have data right here. Well, at least it's better than 64k bit a second. 7, 8. You can just see how long this goes for. Dun, dun, dun. Dropping up, down, up, down. Oh, we're up to 44 there. 44 again. A little bit. Back down. Okay, it looks like it already. Okay, here we go. It's. Exited. Sleep in 30 seconds. It means I've got to talk for the next 30. Uh, unfortunately, these portable hard drives, they're sold as backup drives, and I'm getting a lot of people who use them as their only drive, uh, resulting in a lot of very upset people. I can completely understand how the marketing catches them like that. But if you know anyone that is running these drives, please make sure that they uh, are aware they really need to have the data on their primary device and that it's only a backup. Okay, looks for a backup again. And we're straight into 44,000. Okay, so it's definitely the bug or the firmware issue probably that people are talking about. Because this, uh, this is going well. Seems to start out slow but come up good. And what I'm mostly pleased about is this remaining time. Well, we're talking about a day here, so that's at 10 k, 10 megabyte a second. So that's fine. We can leave the machine running. My data recovery machine just runs 24/7. Let's see. What are we up to? 1.2 gigs already. Uh, recovering 1.2 gigs at 64 k by a second would be a couple of hours at least so we're definitely well ahead the main thing we've got to watch for here is can the drive survive the whole duration before we get to the end of the drive um, given that it doesn't seem to be a read head or a mechanical failure at this point it probably can it'll definitely shorten the life of the drive but the drive is doomed anyway we're, we're getting rid of the drive all we need to do is just get to the end of the data. Now this is a one terabyte drive, but more than likely the person probably doesn't have much more than three, four hundred megs. I didn't ask them, but that's not unusual for these drives to not be completely full. Um, I think this is going well. So we'll let this run. Hopefully um, by tomorrow we should have everything back. And then what we'll do is with the captured the image that we've copied we can then just mount that as a loopback device copy any data we want off to a separate drive and we'll hold on to this image perhaps for two weeks make sure the customer copies their data off to yet another drive and once all that's done we can clear it up and hopefully they won't ever have any more dramas again all right well i'm going to leave it at that and looks like we've got a successful repair well, not that we'd really call this a repair, it's more of a successful data recovery. And I'll put links into the comments as to all the different parts we've got here. This wait for device tool, the DD Rescue tool. Um, I'll package up my schematic and uh, Gerber files and whatnot for the USB switch as well as linking off to the website that had the 
fundamental design for doing the USB switch with uh, the AVR microcontrollers. It's just using a 80 mega 48 in this case. Oh, sorry, no, not this one. This is using a 80 tiny 2313. Uh, it's a pretty classic combination for the USB. Uh, okay, we've got our first bad sectors here. So we've got 64k of it. That's not really a problem. That should just carry on to the end. And when it gets right to the end, it will come back and it will scrape and trim those bad areas, hopefully clear it up. So looks like we've got a couple of bad spots on there, hopefully not too much. Uh, overall, it looks like it's doing quite well. We've got two gigs already. So I'll um, leave it at that again, and uh, hopefully all goes well. Thanks a lot.